28, I guess, on you went moved there when he was 18 with his father. Um, his dad developed pulmonary problems from World War One, and he was a cafe owner and was told by his doctors he had to move to the countryside. Uh, so he had a second career as a winemaker. Um, Gaston went to school and 34 came back to start helping his dad out with the family business um, and then was sent off to World War II where he was a uh, POW, as written about, there was a book like Wine and War, yeah. Wine and Roses? Wine and, Wine and War, actually. Wine and yeah. War, yeah. Sorry, I should know this. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, it's great. Right on camera too, which is good. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll edit. And we'll, so, we'll take that out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make um, it sound like he said. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> has a really neat history where he was, um, where he, you know, he led his his a, a group of maybe a hundred to two hundred soldiers and POWs, saved them from kind of the Nazi attack. Um, came back and found uh, the vineyards shambles sort of just overgrown the plow was now a planter you know just or decoration and so he said I'm gonna make sure that this this thrives this is my mission this is what's gonna happen um, so in 53 they added they started out with three hectares of, of Olia in 53 added Clodi Borg and in 57 added Le Mont. so uh, you what as we know it today was completed in 1957 um, Gaston had Three children, two daughters and a son, um, and his youngest daughter married Noel Pengay in 1968. Um, in the meantime, his son Jean went to a winemaking school, came back and apprenticed with his father, and decided after about a year, this isn't what I want to do. This isn't where my passion lies. I'm going to go be a photographer. Um, Gaston didn't really know what to do with that. Uh, he needed somebody to help him out you know, with the business, and so he asked Marie-Francoise and Noel, who were living um, in Paris at the time, uh, to move home uh, so that Noel could apprentice under Gaston and learned the ins and, out of, in, ins and outs of the company um, and take over winemaking responsibilities. So uh, Noel moved back in 1971, starting from, you know, a harvest worker from the ground up learning all aspects of the company and in 1978 took over uh, full winemaking responsibilities um, and so he remains there today. Um, the Huang family comes into play because in 2002 Gaston was in failing health um, and his children didn't want to take over the responsibility of the company. Um, they hadn't been involved. Marie Francoise is married to the winemaker, but that's sort of the extent of her involvement. Um, and so he was looking for some outside investment and partnership um, so as not to see his legacy collapse. Um, and uh, we shared the same importer in Robert Chatterton uh, with you at the time, Kira Yodvar did. Um, and Bob introduced us to Gesson and to Noel. And, and Noel's a mathematician by training. My dad's a physicist, so they see things very, very similarly. Um, and my dad has a deep appreciation for kind of the history of estates. Um, and so Gaston had confidence that, you know, his vision of what the company should remain would be upheld. Um, and so in 03, we purchased a controlling share of the company. Um, we made the conscious decision not to change day-to-day -day operations. Um, you don't make an investment for no reason. Things are working. The wines are fantastic. Um, and so Noel is at the helm in charge of, you know, operations out there. The only thing that's changed in the last eight years since we've been involved is that, you know, we're sitting here today and we're tasting the wines. And mm -hmm. people uh, now, I think, have more access or more ability to access and enjoy the wines, which is yeah. important. That's why you make them. Yeah.